All right, page 557 in your textbooks, you did numbers 2, 6, and 8 on pages 557 to 558. Kendall's book is now falling apart, too. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is three people now who have ripped out a page of their book. Good news is you... Stop trying to read it. <laughs> <laughs> after, after the exam, if you feel you must rip your book up, you, you may, but let's, let's pull it together until then. Um, let's review some things that we talked about yesterday. We began talking about the study of collecting, organizing, uh, analyzing, and interpreting numerical data. What's that study called, class? Statistics. statistics. And with statistics, and really there's two categories or approaches to statistics. One approach seeks to draw conclusions from the numbers. So you see the stats, you get the results, and from those results you draw a conclusion from it. That's called inferential statistics. The other approach is just, hey, I'm just curious, what's up? And so you get an answer to your question. And that, okay, that's all. I didn't really need to know for any particular reason. I was just curious. Um, just getting the facts is referred to as descriptive. So descriptive and inferential. Within a statistical study, the entire group that is being studied is referred to class as the population of the study. Now, you don't necessarily study every single item in the population. Oftentimes, you could. Um, usually, you'll take just a portion of the population. We refer to that portion, Michael, as a mm, sample. What is it called? Sample. sample. So the whole group class is the population. population, and the portion you study is called the sample. sample. What do we use to represent the sample size? We're going to see this letter today. Abby? Um, the letter N for the number that is being looked at or the number that is being studied. Uh, then the, the question, if you will, the one thing the statistical study concerns itself with is referred to as, Maddie, the, the variable. Okay, The variable is the thing you're actually studying. Talk about two types of variables. If a variable can't really be put in terms of a number, uh, then we would describe the variable, Brandon, as being qualitative. There we go, qualitative. But if the variable could be a number genesis, there we go, fly that back to the hangar. Uh, <laughs> as, we, uh, as we look at variables that could be considered numbers, those would be quantitative variables. Quantitative variables can be found one of two ways, either by measuring or just by counting. If we can just count the variables, uh, then we would have what type of quantitative data? discrete quantitative data. And if you have to measure to get your answer, Michael, we would call that? Measurable. No. Continuous. Continuous. Continuous quantitative data. We got all those terms out of the way, and then we actually got to some math. We said if you've got a set of statistics and you're trying to figure out kind of what is normal, we said we have three measures of Center Measures of center describe what's normal. But there's three different ones we looked at. All of them begin with the letter M. So, Maddie, can you give me one of those measures of center? The median. And what is the median, class? It's the middle. What do you have to do with the numbers before you can find a median, though? Uh, Genesis? You have to rank them. Good job using the term. That's going to be my next question. Okay, so what does she mean when she says rank them, class? Put them in order, right? Put them in order, preferably least to greatest. Could do greatest to least, I guess. And anyway, usually least to greatest is how we do it. But putting them in order means is ranking them. Uh, by the way, we have a symbol for median. What was that symbol we'd use, anyone? Capital M for median. We talked about another measure of center. Abby? Um, the mean. The mean. And what is the mean class? Average. That's the average, meaning you add them all up, divide by how many there are. What's the symbol for the mean, anyone? X bar. X bar, X with a little bar. We're going to see that today quite a bit. Um, then we talked about a third measure of center. Now, the mean and the median you can't use for qualitative data. Like, how are you going to add up all of the eye colors and divide by the number of eyes? You can't add eye colors. How are we supposed to put eye colors in order and find the middle one? Who's to say that we put blues before greens? I don't know. You know? So mean and median, you really can't do with qualitative data, but the third measure of center you can use even for qualitative data, and that would be random the mode. mode. And what is the mode class? The, 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 mo most often. the one that occurs most often. And what is the mode class? 
The one that occurs most often, we do have a quiz Monday, so you may want to participate and make sure you're maybe making at least mental notes here. Um, if you're watching, that's the next lesson. Um, but with the mean, median, and mode, right, these measures of center, these measures of what's normal for the statistics, we said, how are you supposed to choose which is the best? I mean, obviously, if it's qualitative class, your only choice is mode. If it's qualitative, your only option is mode. But if it's quantitative, well, then we usually try to avoid the mode. We'd usually go with the mean or the median, but how do we know which one? There's a couple indicators, a couple things we can look at to tell us which one. One of them is if there's a number that's just way bigger than everything else, or maybe a couple numbers just kind of way off by themselves. For instance, if we were to look at the income of people in the United States, all right, there are some people who are dirt poor, okay? There are some people who are you know, they're scraping by minimum wage. They're maybe making, you know, anywhere in you know, 15, 18,000 a year. That's not much, not much to live on. Then we've got kind of the lower middle class who's in maybe the uh, mid-range 20 to upper 20,000s a year. Then we've got kind of your middle class in the 30 to 40,000 a year. Your upper middle class would be your 40 to 70,000 a year, maybe 40 to 80,000. And then your upper class get to, the, you know, anything over 70,000. But then there are some people who are millionaires and billionaires, right? And uh, most of them are Democrats, and they complain about rich people, which makes no sense. But I digress. We'll get off politics. Um, if we were to uh, lump them in with the rest of us, okay, their billions are so far removed from the average guy, the average worker here, that if we were to actually take the average, the mean, of the United States income, it would look like we're all filthy rich pulling down six figures. Most people are not making six figures in this country. But if you included all the millionaires and billionaires in the average or the mean, it would make it look like that's so. So because of those, what do we call those numbers that are out there by themselves, class? Outliers. outliers. Because if there's outliers, it messes up the mean. We looked yesterday at kids' grades, and there was 165, one bad day. And man, look what it did to the average, right? Okay? An outlier messes up the average. So if there are outliers present, we wouldn't use the mean class. We would use the median to describe what is normal. Okay? So we use the median if there are outliers present. Now, there's another way we could check for outliers, I suppose, or describe the existence of outliers. And that's by taking the difference between the lowest number and the highest number in the data set. And uh, that difference between lowest and highest class is called the? Range. The range. If the range is remotely close to the same size as your mean, it's an unreliable mean because you have a really spread out data set. We don't like that. That indicates there's probably outliers present. Um, so a couple ways we could approach that. And that's what we were working on in our homework. Page 557, unit numbers 2, 6, and 8. Let's take a look at those very quickly together. Number two is just working on some of that terminology, asking about the population. Get my microscope out. Uh, <laughs> asking about the population of a uh, a uh, describe description here. Go ahead and read number two for us, if you would, Michael. Amber wants to determine which colors are most often chosen by a coworker as their favorite color. She has ten of uh, the thirty-one people on that job. All right. So the question is, first of all, what's the population, uh, Kendall? The 31 people. Okay, there's 31 people in her job. That's the entire group. The entire group class is the population. But she doesn't ask all 31. No, no, no. Ain't nobody got time for that. She only asks how many genesis. So we would say that 10 is our sample size. Good. Um, what's the variable? What's the thing she's trying to find out here, Maddie? The favorite color. Is that quantitative or qualitative, Abby? Qualitative. That's qualitative. So we don't need to answer the next question of is it discrete or continuous because it's not, it's qualitative. That, there isn't that uh, added little thing there. Questions on number two? Have we got all four answers right? You're good to go on that terminology. All right, turn the page and let's look at number six. And for this, you were finding the mode, the median, the mean, and the range for the data set. Sarah measured the following amounts of rain that fell in her house for a month. So uh, let's see, how many days did it rain, class? Seven. Seven days it rained. One day it rained 1.03 inches of rain. Then it was 2.3 inches, then 1.45, then 1.26, then 1.8, then 1.13, and then 2.0. All right, and uh, easier perhaps if you kind of write them the other order. We've got all seven of our numbers up here. 
Um, fortunately, we have calculators, so we don't have to uh, do any of the math ourselves because we're lazy like that. Well, the first question is, what's the mode? Which amount of rainfall occurred most often, class? No. None. No number stands out on this list at all. What if uh, there were a couple numbers that uh, both had two? What if there were a couple numbers that both occurred three times and everything else only occurred once? Then we might say we've got a couple modes because they do kind of stand out a little bit. Um, if there's just a single mode class, we would describe the statistics as being unimodal, okay? And if there's two modes, bimodal. If there were three modes, there isn't a mode, okay? If three numbers stand out, nothing stands out. It's kind of like, you know, uh, the school that advertises, all of our students are honor students. If everyone's an honor student, nobody deserves any honor because there's no honor there. Anyway, I digress. Uh, the second thing was the median. Well, if you go through the median, we have three here and three here. If we knock them off, clearly the 1.45 stands out as the middle value. How many have 1.45 inches as the median? For the mean, we just had to add them all on the calculator, divide by seven. Um, it said around to three decimal places if necessary. Maddie, what did you have for the mean? Yeah, 1.567 uh, inches is the mean. Now, notice the median was 1.45. The mean is 1.567. Those aren't terribly far apart, are they? Um, and then finally it said find the range. Well, what is the range of the data set, Audrey? Oh, you didn't rank them first. You didn't put them in order. So you took the two, which was the last number, minus the first number, but you didn't have them ranked. If we rank them, it's 2.3 minus 1.03, Brandon? 1.27. 1.27 mm -hmm. inches is the range. Now, 1.27 for a range, that's kind of close to this. I don't know. Would you say 2.3 is an outlier? We've got a bigger gap here, honestly. So I don't know that I'd say we necessarily have outliers. Since I don't really see outliers, I'm going to say that the average probably is the best measure of center. My default to the average being the best measure of center, unless there are clear outliers, then we'll go with the median. How many have these answers, though, on number six? And then make sense on the last one? Did you get the median right? You did get that right. Hmm, okay. So you did rank them then, because you wouldn't have found 1.45 had you not ranked them. Um, question? All right. Let's take a look at number eight. Uh, Gary did a survey to find out how many rooms the 15 houses on his street had and found the following results. All right, for the sake of time, I'm not going to put these on the board. <laughs> but you did. You were not on the board, but you put them on your paper. You ranked them, I trust. And uh, first of all, what was the mode of the data, Kendall? Uh, Okay, um, now the text has different answer, and I haven't written these out yet. I'm seeing a lot of eights, first of all. A one, two, three, four, five eights, and five tens. So I'm, I would say bimodal, because both of those seem to kind of pop off the page. Like there's a couple nines, but you know, there's a bigger gap between five of something and just two of something. So I would say two, eight and 10 would be the two modes there. That's kind of what's normal. Um, what about the median, back to Kendall? Um, nine. nine, okay, was the middle number. Um, what about the mean when you added all those together and divided by the 15 houses? Michael? 8.933. 8.933. Notice they're pretty much the same value, aren't they? Nine, 8.933. So either value is going to give you a really good answer as far as what's normal on his street. And uh, what about the range on this one? Let's come back to Audrey. What's the biggest number? And the smallest number? And so the range should be five. There we go. Five should have been our range. Um, any outliers, class? No, I mean, 12's not that far away from anything else. Seven, certainly. So really compact data set, really solid in that the median and median very close together. How many have those answers on number eight? Are there any questions on this? Let's get just a little bit more practice before we move on. Flip back to page 557 and do number three. Flip back to page 557, do number three, and then on page 558, number five. So page 557 to 558, let's do number three and number five. Now that we should have a pretty good idea of what we're doing after going over the homework.
looks like most of us are about finished, so let's take a look at number three. First of all, flip back to page 557 and uh, read this for us, if you would, Audrey. Can you not see now she has the same or more shoes than I ever had in her shoes to find out? She has seven or ten pounds of the one in her shoes. All right, what's the population here, um, Audrey? Twenty-five. The twenty-five women. Um, I guess there's only 25 women at the church. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what's the sample size, Brandon? Seven. Seven. Um, what's the variable, Abby? Um, the shoes. How many pairs of shoes they have, right. Um, quantitative or qualitative, Maddie? Quantitative, quantitative discrete, or continuous? Um, Genesis? Discrete. discrete. Good. If you look up at number one where Jennifer is trying to measure the breadth of the palms of people's hands for no good reason. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's, there must be a reason. She's just curious. But anyway, that would be a continuous variable winning because it's a measurement. Uh, questions on three? All right. Let's take a look at number five then. And um, by the way, this would be a population study, um, assuming that uh, this is all 11 games. Okay, So we're not taking a sample of games in the basketball season. This is all of Lucas's games. Um, during the basketball season, he had 11 games he played in, and uh, he had double digits most of the time. Really, just one game where he, uh, he didn't do so hot. But uh, the question is, first of all, what is the mode of the data? And as you ranked them, the mode should have been pretty obvious. Kendall? Um, mm, ten. Ten, right? Ten was the number that stood out more than any other did. Now, had there been another triple number, if it had been 15, there isn't even two of anything else. So then I would say it's bimodal 10 and 15. There have been a couple of extra sevens and a couple of extra 14s. And okay, then there maybe is no mode. But here, one clear mode stands out. What about the median? It's kind of checked it off, reaching to the middle here. Michael? 14. 14 ended up being the value in the middle. For X bar, for the average, when you added them all together, divided by the 11, Audrey, you had. 13.636. By the way, notice these numbers very close together. That's a good indication of a good tight data set. I wouldn't say there's really any outliers. I mean, two away, three away, that's not bad at all. But what is the range? And you know, the range might deceptively make it look like it's a broad data set. Brandon? 14. 14. The range is as big as the average, so it looks like it's pretty spread out. We're going to talk about that as the focus of our lesson here, as far as the spread outness of data. But before we do, questions on number five. How many had those answers? All right. Now, I want to forewarn you before I get into today's material, okay? At points, it may feel like this is going to be awfully challenging. I promise you by the time we get to the end of the lesson, you'll realize it's not nearly as bad as you'll think it is, okay? But don't let yourself get scared. Trust me that I'm going to take care of you, okay? I know it's the end of the year and I know your brains are tired. But trust me, we're going to go into some deep stuff today. I'm going to try to emphasize the things you do need to know. And if I don't really emphasize it and I move on quickly, breathe a sigh of relief, okay? Because we're going to go through a few different things today. Look back at page 557 with me, if you would. And I just want to point something out. There's a set of data, actually a couple sets of data, in that section called the range. See those little sets of data? And what they've got showing here is that both sets of data have the same range. They both have a range of 13. But a range of 13 makes it look like the data is spread out the same, right? Well, that last set of data, I just erased it, but the last set of data had a range of 14. Was it really that spread out? It wasn't that bad. I mean, it spread out over 11 different values, right? Only a range of 14 is not so bad. Well, here, they both have a range of 13. Is the data really that spread out? Well, look at the first set of numbers. One of those is a clear outlier, class 15. Look at the next one. Any real outliers? No. One data set class, they're all pretty close together, kind of evenly distributed throughout the data set. We've got a pretty good distribution throughout the set. In the first one, that's just wonky. It's bottom heavy. And there's this one random outlier at the top. Look over, if you would, at page 559. So turn a page, and you see another kind of two sets of data next to each other. They're uh, toward the uh, yeah, top third of the page, or bottom third of the page, uh, where it starts with 76, and the next one goes to 80. But then, well, looking at the data set, the first one is 76, 80, 82, 84, 85, which is kind of little increments as it gets bigger, right? 
The next line is consistently 76, and then boom, they hit you with another outlier, right? One of those is pretty evenly distributed. The other one is not evenly distributed. Agreed? So the range, though, they both have the same range. Range doesn't really tell us much about the distribution of the data set. At least it's not sufficient to tell us what we want to know. We want to know a little bit more. So there's three ways that we're going to talk about today for finding distribution of data. That's going to be the next section in your notes, finding distribution of data. And there's a key word here that's also used in place of the word distribution. That's variation. The variation of numbers within the data set. That second set of data, I mean, it's all 76, except for 194. There's not a lot of variation there. There's just very sudden variation. Where in the previous set, it was a pretty even variation of numbers, a very even distribution. The first measure, that we'll, the first thing that we'll talk about for distribution of data is something called mean deviation. Mean deviation. Mean deviation is your different or your definition. It's the average difference, the average difference between each value and the mean. It's the average difference between each value and the mean. The average difference between each value and the mean. So if we want to know, okay, how much variation is there? We'll take each individual number in the set and see how big of a difference does it have between that and the mean of the data set. And you take the, all of those differences and you average them together. So here's your, here's your equation for mean deviation, and you don't need to put a star next to this. You need to know the definition for mean deviation, but for reasons you're going to see as we go on, you don't have to memorize the definition. So again, don't panic here. But the, def the uh, equation for mean deviation, write it down, is the sum of the absolute value differences between any value and the mean divided by how many values there are. It looks really cool and complicated. It's really not that bad. We're going to take a look at a problem here in just a moment. But x simply represents any given value in the data set minus the average or the mean but we're going to take the absolute value because if you didn't, you might have, for instance, if the average is 7 and you've got a 5 and you've got a 9, well, this difference is negative 2 and this difference is positive 2, and they would offset. Well, we can't have that. They both have a difference of 2. So by taking absolute value, okay, the differences are 2. Okay, so we're going to take the absolute value of the differences. We're going to take a summation, there's that notation from before, of all of those values, and then divide it by how many values there are. Look if you would on page 560 with me. And get your calculators ready. Get your calculators ready. I'm going to teach you something. Now, I'm going to teach it for the TI-30XA people. For those who have a different calculator, you may have to do this a different way. It's okay. There's an easy way to do it on every calculator. This calculator just has kind of an interesting feature I want to show you. All right, so if we were trying to find the average, because after all, I can't subtract the average if I don't know the average, right? I need to find the x bar. So if you want to put this down as step number one, find the mean, find x bar. We don't have a particularly complicated data set here. There's only eight numbers in the example problem. So what you could do, most of you, those of you who don't have this calculator, is just add the numbers and divide by eight. For those who do have this calculator, what you could do is you could use, you see above your STO button, you see a button that says STO? That's what you use to stow something, like stow your stuff. Okay, literally, it means store. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, right above it, there's a sigma plus. This is your way of adding a value into a data set. So if you would, calculator's turned on, type 84, and then hit sigma plus. Now the screen suddenly changes. You'll see n equals 1. That tells you there's one number in the sample. And you'll see the word stat at the top, meaning that you have now entered statistical mode. Okay, do you see that on the calculator? Anyone not see what I'm talking about? 84 sigma plus. Did you hit that, Brandon? Or do you need me to come help you? It's like showing n equals 3. Okay, stop hitting sigma plus. You only hit it once. <laughs> yeah, no, you got it now. Does it say n equals 1? Okay, 84 sigma plus. There we go. Okay. Now, now type 76 sigma plus. 
then 85 sigma plus. And notice the n keeps changing every time you add another value. It's just telling you how many values there are. 89 sigma plus, 80 sigma plus, uh, 82 sigma plus, 94 sigma plus, 89 sigma plus, and it should have n equals 8. Those of you who do not have this calculator, just add them all together. Just plus, 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 just add them all up, and then divide by 8. You guys don't need to. Your calculator already knows the average. You just have to tell it to show it to you. See above the x squared, I pointed this out yesterday, there's that x bar. If you hit second function x bar, it'll give you the average. x bar is 84.875. Now, that's the same thing that the other people have who just added and divided by 8. But do we all have 84.875? That's the sum, or that is rather the average of all the values. Make sense? Step number two, we need to determine or find n. Well, we've already done that. Obviously, n is 8. Okay, the calculator was telling us that a minute ago. There's 8 values. That's pretty easy. Step number three is really kind of the key to mean deviation. We need to find each individual difference of values. Do we see this? So we're going to have to find all the x minus x bar values. So now that we know that 84.875, they've got a different, they've got a different mean on theirs. They've got 84.9. Do you have 84.9 or oh, they rounded. They rounded the nearest tenth. Okay. Do, let's tell you what, let's make our lives easier. Let's round. Let's do it with 84.9. Sorry. It's kind of thrown off by the rounded value. Let's round to 84.9. That'll make your life easier. Go and turn the calculator off. Turn it back on to clear your data set. Turn it off. Turn it back on. What we are going to do now is determine the difference between each of these numbers and 84.9. Now, they've done this for you, but how far is 84 from 84.9, class? How far is 84 from 84.9? 0.9. That's how far it is. But picture a number line. Picture degrees on a thermometer. Picture money in your bank account. Picture anything that has to do with numbers. 84 is 0.9 away. So the difference is 0.9. This is it. Was it positive or negative 0.9? We're doing absolute value. It's always positive. Just say 0.9. How far is 76 from 84.9? Well, if we wanted to, we could subtract it. But we would get class. We'd end up with, uh, excuse me, I don't need the bar. What am I doing? I ended up with 8.9. Okay, 8.9 is our difference. Uh, look at the next one, 85. How far is 85 from 84.9? 0.1, that's the difference. How far is 89 from 84.9? Again, you can subtract it on the calculator. 89 minus 84.9, 4.1. All right, uh, how far is 80 from 84.9? 4.9. How far is 82 from 84.9? 2.9. Again, you could be subtracting on your calculator each time if you wanted to. How far is 94 from 84.9? 9.1. Yeah, that annoying borrowing, right? Uh, got me a minute ago myself. And then 89 minus uh, 84.9. 4.1 again. So we get all these differences, right? So find all the individual differences. Number four, find the sum of all of these. Well, again, we can do this. We can use our calculator to find this. So people who have a calculator like mine, Couple ways we can one way we can do this is we can again use the statistical mode. And now I'm going to enter this set of numbers: 0 0.9 sigma plus, 8.9 sigma plus, 0.1 sigma plus, 4.1 sigma plus, 4.9 sigma plus, 2.9 sigma plus, 9.1 sigma plus, 4.1 sigma plus. Until you've got all eight individual differences entered. To find the sum of all of these, do you see um, right above the open parenthesis button, right below the x squared, do you see that sigma x? That shows you the sum of all the numbers you just put. So you use second function, open parenthesis. And what is the sum of all the differences? 
35 exactly. And remember, we can divide this by n, which is 8. So we just take 35 divided by 8, and we get what is the mean deviation for the data set? 4.375. The mean deviation, 4.375. So finally, number 5, divide by n. Or, the other option, is instead of hitting sigma x, now hit second function x bar. And it's the same thing, because it's the average of all of those deviations. So we found all of the differences and averaged them. So that's the other option. Or just find the average of all of those individual differences. That's the mean deviation, but let's be real, that's a bit of a pain, isn't it? Can you give me the study away? Finding all of these individual differences is just annoying, right? We would agree? Okay. There's, a, there's another, uh, well, let's practice with it one more time anyway, though, because maybe second time through it won't be as bad. Page 563. Page 563. Look at number six. There in the practice section. Page 563, number six. Read that for us, if you would, Genesis. Okay, read, go ahead and read the numbers out. All right, so if we want to find the mean deviation for these numbers of bicycles, the first thing I need to do in class is find the mean, the average number of bicycles. So by whatever method you choose, either add them up and divide by how many there are, or use the, turn the calculator off, turn it back on again to clear your statistical mode, use the sigma plus and then the x bar. I'm going to do the latter. It's actually slightly fewer keystrokes. And I don't have to count how many there are, because the calculator will do that for me. And what is the average number of bicycles? 788. That's the average number of bicycles. How many had 788 for the average number of bicycles? All right, questions? Anyone have any issues with the calculator? All right, next thing we're going to do, we need to determine the n. Well, what is the n, class? Seven. Seven. Again, the calculator told me that. I didn't even have to count them. I just plugged in the numbers and it told me. Now, again, if there's only seven numbers, is it really that hard to count, class? But can you imagine if you had a table of, say, I don't know, 40 numbers? I don't have to count those, but I can quickly just keep typing, 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 and the calculator can keep track for me. So that's one of the upsides, I guess, of the statistical mode on that end. Number three is the key. This is where the math is involved. I've got to find the differences in each case of each value from the average. So subtract 741 minus 788. And what's the difference, class? 47. It might say negative 47, but we don't worry about negatives because we're doing absolute value. Then 910 minus 788. What's the difference? 122. Someone besides Brandon for 750. What's the difference? 38. Good. Uh, for the next one, 738. Uh, we could do this in our head. Oh, well. <laughs> 50, yeah. Uh, for 761. Ooh, I don't have that. Okay. I have 27. Remember, the average is this number here, the 788. Uh, then for the 827, 39. And then for uh, what you call the uh, 789. Oh, 789. I'm not going to type that in. One. <laughs> I heard people laughing, so I was forewarned to look at the number a little more closely. All right, so these are all the differences. What we want to do now is find the sum of these differences. Now, again, you don't have to use statistical mode for this. You could, or you could just add them all together. I'm going to still use statistical mode. I'm going to clear it off, turn it back on again to clear it. 47 sigma plus, 22 sigma plus, 38 sigma plus, 50, 27, 39, and 1. And I'm going to use second function sigma plus. Again, that's that open parenthesis to give me the sum of all the individual deviations. 324. And then finally, class, we divide it by 7. And what is the average, devi the mean of deviation, rather? 46.2, blah, blah, blah. 
I question. Do you want to write it? Let me watch. Okay, you got to turn it off, turn it back on before you enter them. Okay? Because you got to re got to clear it out. Okay, so now 47, 7 plus, 22, 30, 50, 27, 39, and 1. And then the sigma x is right here, so second function, mm -hmm. this button gives you the total. All right? All right, questions on mean deviation. I don't want to spend more time here because mean deviation has its own share of issues. Uh, look at page 560, if you would, please. Look back at page 560 for just a moment. They use a couple of graphs and a couple of data sets, right? And the one data set is 555, 15, 15, 15. The mean deviation, if you were to do the work, would be 5. The next data set is 1, 5, 9, 11, 15, 19. Much more spread out, but the mean deviation is still 5. Huh. Notice values that are really far away, like 19, kind of gets offset by a value that's closer, like 1, because the average in both cases is 10, right? That's the x bar for each is 10. So values that are far apart, have it ends up being counterbalanced by others. We need to try to give outliers more weight, is the way mathematicians approached this. So mathematicians said, forget mean deviation, is why I said, don't worry too much about it. We're going to take it a step further. You need to know the definition for mean deviation. Again, class, it's the average difference between each value and the mean. But they said forget mean deviation. That's not good enough because close numbers are offsetting far numbers and far numbers are really what makes something not, uh, not close together. So you came up with something called variance. Variance. Variance is defined, or excuse me, variance squares the differences. Variance squares the differences. This gives outliers more, uh, more power, literally, um, and divides the sum by n minus 1. Variance squares the differences and divides the sum by n minus 1. Variance squares the differences. So mean deviation just takes the differences and adds them all up. Variance takes the sum of the squares of the differences and divides by n minus 1. So some mathematician who's way smarter than me decided if you divide by n, you've got this crazy number anyway because you've got all these squares, right, which are going to be huge. So there's a possibility of a little bit of bias. By dividing by n minus 1, we offset that bias. I'll be real honest, that one kind of flies over my head even. So we'll just take their word for it because they're smart people. Variance represented by the symbol little s squared, showing that variance relies on squares. So variance is shown with the symbol s squared. And here's your formula, which you do not need to memorize. s squared is equal to the sum, not of x minus x bar, but the sum of x minus x bar squared all over not n, but n minus 1. Do you see it's really the mean deviation formula? But we're squaring all of the differences, and we're dividing not by n, but by n minus 1. That's really the difference. So variance squares the differences and divides by n minus 1. Now, hopefully, you didn't clear your calculator. How many still have that on the calculator? You didn't turn it off. How many did turn it off and you're sad now? Okay, because for those of you who still have your calculator with all the numbers in there, you remember where we hit sigma x above the parentheses button? Look right above the closing parentheses. That gives you the sum of the squares. We already typed all these numbers in and we found the sigma x to be 324. But sigma x squared is 23,288. And the calculator can do it for you. Now, if you don't have the TI-30XA and you can't figure out how to do it on your calculator, 47 squared, write it down. 122 squared, write it down. 38 squared, write it down. 50 squared, write it down. 27 squared, write it down. 39 squared, write it down. One squared is one. 
And then <laughs> you add all those big numbers together. But well, I've just done it for you because the calculator kept track of it. But we're not going to divide by n, which is 7, class. We're going to divide by n minus 1, which is 6. And that gives us the variation is 3,881.33 dot dot. Point three repeating, it looks like. So you're telling me. Going back to the problem we were just working on. These were bicycles, right? 741 bicycles, 910 bicycles, 750 bicycles, etc., right? So what's the variance? 3,800? Seem a little weird to you? Yeah, me too. So smart mathematicians came along and said, yeah, but see, this is such a big number, this variance thing. So we're going to do something else. What if we took the square root of that number? That would make it smaller. So now take the square root, those who have it on the calculator already. And the square root of variance is something called standard deviation. Write that term in your notes. Standard deviation. Standard deviation is simply represented S, sometimes represented by this Greek lowercase sigma. Now, technically, that refers to a population. Standard deviation meaning you polled everybody or everything. You'll see both symbols, okay? We're going to use S, but the calculator has it labeled with a sigma. You'll see this in a minute. Standard deviation is defined as the square root of variance. Standard deviation is defined as the square root of variance. Know that definition. Standard deviation is defined as the square root of the variance. Know the definition. What would the formula look like? Well, obviously, S, not S squared, would equal the square root of sigma x minus x bar squared all over n minus 1. Duh, of course that's the formula because it's the square root of the variance. You don't have to know that formula, but do write it in your notes just for reference. But you're not going to have to memorize it because your calculator, with one push of a button, can tell you the standard deviation. So we don't have to find any of the differences. We certainly don't have to square any of the differences. Your calculator could get it right away. Now, those of you who had it, how many took the square root and you see the mean standard deviation in front of you? What is it? 62.3. 62.3, blah, blah, blah. That's the standard deviation, OK? For a data set of numbers that are in the 700s, 800s, 900s, that's not a bad standard deviation, OK? But your calculator can do it this way. Even if you cleared your calculator, we're going to re-enter the original numbers on the calculator. So turn it off, turn it back on. We're going to enter 741 sigma plus, 910 sigma plus, 750 sigma plus, 738 sigma plus, 751 sigma plus, 827 sigma plus, 789 sigma plus. It's going to say n equals 7. This is what you do need to know. You don't need to know any of the formulas from today. This is great news, right? No formulas memorized. But you do need to find this symbol on the calculator. Sigma xn minus 1. This is your standard deviation. And if you just hit, for us, it's over the square root symbol. Second function, boom, there's your 62.3. You didn't have to find any differences. You didn't have to square anything. One push of a button. And frankly, to statisticians now, this is the only measure of deviation that's regularly used. This is kind of how we got there. I wanted you to understand that. This is really the only, variant, the only measure of variation I want you to know. You need to know the definitions of these other guys, the average differences, the squares of the average, you know, the, the sum of the squares divided by n minus 1, the square root of variance. You need to know those terms, but the only one I'm ever going to ask you to find is the one that the calculator can do for you. How many have the 62.3? All right. Did not find it? Okay. Let me see. Uh, second function. So you've got seven numbers. So you're close. You might have just mistyped something. All right. So here's the problem. Those of you who don't have a calculator in mind, we need to figure out where your standard deviation is. So I'll do that right after class because we're about out of time here. For homework this evening, let me give you the homework. We're going to practice the standard deviation more on Monday in our next lesson. For homework, I want you to page 563 to 564, pages 563 to 564.
review 1 through 12. Page 563 to 564, review 1 through 12. Now hold on, I'm going to change some of the, the things on you. You should be on page 563 already. Notice for 1 through 4 it says find the mode, median, mean, and range. I also want the standard deviation. So I'm going to get a, add a fifth thing for 1 through 4. I also want you to find standard deviation. Let me just check and clarify one more time. You guys who have my calculator, you know where standard deviation is now, correct? It's just you two that don't. I need to help you figure out how to find standard deviation. Okay, so we're going to do that on 1 through 4. Also find standard deviation. We'll look at all of that on Monday, and we'll review over this, and we'll wrap it up with your last quiz of the school year on Monday in our next lesson. Have a great day.